Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. And welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. It sure and is. And I am relatively confused. Okay. Um, welcome. <laughs> relatively confused about the nature of the spells and how you mm. know they can be done without wands, with yeah. wands, how they're focused, how they're not focused. The, yeah. the, the wand lore here it's a little is fuzzy. It's pretty spectacular. Um, especially we get a second recurrence of flashes of sparks coming out of these wands. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in this in this particular case, it's Snape's, and in the last chapter or two tap- chapters ago, it was Harry. So there's some stuff to get into here that sure I'm looking is. forward to, to to looking into. Digging it, man. Yes. I'm digging it. Well, before we before we dig into it, while we're digging it, uh, we want to remind you we are in chapter 19 of the Prisoner of Azkaban, the servant of Lord Voldemort. I don't know how I did it, he said slowly. I think the only reason I never lost my mind is that I knew I was innocent. That wasn't a happy thought, so the Dementors couldn't suck it out of me, but it kept me sane and knowing who I am. Helped me keep my power, so when it all became too much, I could transform in my cell, become a dog. Dementors can't see you now, he swallowed. They feel their way around people by sensing their emotions. They could tell that my feelings were less... Less human, less complex when I was a dog. But they thought, of course, that I was losing my mind like everyone else there. So it didn't trouble them. But I was weak, very weak. And I had no hope of driving them away from me without a wand. But then I saw Peter in that picture. And I realized he was at Hogwarts with Harry, perfectly positioned to act as if one hint reached his ears of the dark side was gathering strength again. Ready to strike at the moment he could be sure of allies and deliver the last potter to them. If he gave them Harry, who dares say he betrayed Lord Voldemort? He'd be welcomed back with honors. I was the only one that knew Peter was alive. <sighs> I, I could just go and go and go because it's I, yeah, so I know, good. it's true. It, the whole thing is good. Uh, I, 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 and I was... Well, you know, I'll, I'll save it. I'll, I'll okay. save it because okay. I got a lot to say about this chapter. I'm and glad, I, and, I, and I don't want to. Um, well, before I, I don't we want to shortchange it, before we get into all this, though, we wanted to remind you that um, we do a load of podcasts, loads and loads of podcasts. Those of you who are joining us live, let us know which podcast you found us through. Fun thing for those of you joining. Right now, um, we talk about Bridgerton, we talk about Outlander, we talk about This Is Us on NBC, we are all sorts of fandoms all over the place, and you can actually find all of our podcasts at maryandblake.com, but I do want to remind you that those of you who are members at jointhenerdclan.com, you're going to get a super special treat this Saturday at the day that we're recording right now. Yes. This Saturday, as a reward to all of you who have generously given at least $2 a month at jointhenerdclan.com, Blake is going to be getting a makeover from me at Minute with Mary. So <laughs> it's only available for our friends at Join the Nerd Clan. So if you're a Hufflepuff and you've had it up to here with Blake hating on Hufflepuffs, you're going to want to donate $2 to uh, Join the Nerd, you, nerd Clan. Yeah, you don't want to miss out on this. And make sure that you can tune on in. We also have two other events happening just for our patrons. We're going to be having a group watch where we're going to watch a show or a movie together and have like a live chat. Anyone who wants to come who's at jointhenerdclan.com. And then we're also going to have a live Zoom. Once again, only available for our friends there. Join the NerdClan.com is your one-stop shop to um, give from the goodness of your heart to help support Blake and I. We're a mom and pop business, like legitimate, but just over the internet. So (laughs) rather than like baking breads or selling eggs, we make podcasts and we don't have corporate sponsors or anything like that. We're just trying to make ends meet as two busy parents do podcasting about Potter. So that being said, if you would like to contribute, head on over to jointhenerdclan.com. Would love to see you there. And let's get into this show. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. All right, so in this chapter, it is like Snake's moment, man. He is, Snake is just like 
all in. He's like, I'm here. I don't want to hear anybody talk about anything. I've got this. Well, guess what? The trio says, nah, Simon. They expelliarmus him together, which kind of knocks him out. And in the meantime, <laughs> Lupin and Severus make up. We hear the truth. And Peter Pettigrew is back to being a human. E, that, that's it, man. And Harry grants him mercy. 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 <sighs> oh, yes, God. That, that decision. The decision to give Peter mercy, that's the, one that I think kind of haunts debatable. Harry for a long time. It's debatable. A little yeah. bit. Yeah. A little bit. Like it could have just stopped here. Yeah. Could have just had it end. <laughs> I mean, yeah. someone else might have come and saved the day. But anyway, the servant or of Lord Voldemort, this refers to the um, prediction that Trelawney just made. Yes. The servant of the Dark Lord. He will come back. Yes, yes. And he will do something. He needs a throat lozenge. <laughs> you like that, Blake? Ricola! <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of things happen, but this, of course, opens with Snape being like, Mu-ha-ha-ha-ha. hey guys, what's up? I'm here. I came in through the tunnel. And he just like lays this all down about how he figured all of this out. And Snape is in his moment. Like, I feel like Snape is as happy as Red Sox fans were in 2004. 2004. Like, our time has come. We finally are here. The curse, <laughs> curse is <over>. is lifted. <laughs> I know where Lupin is, and I figured this out about Sirius Black in my moment my moment. Here to shine. 30 years in the making. <laughs> it's here. I'm here to get you nerds. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I'm letting you take over because I know that this is like no, no, no. your jam. I this mean, is it, your is, man. it is my jam. Uh, like this, this whole thing. I mean. It, okay, so he goes to his office. So once again, yeah. let's just like straight up deviate. I'm sorry. From I'm, the like, movie. I'm so like, my, my whole are. brain is like, is, is firing at all cylinders here. <laughs> for so a couple like, of reasons, yeah. yeah. So for like, for all of this, like, it, it's just very hard to st- figure out where to start. And I think at I want to start. It's a very good, good place, good place to, to start. start. Yeah, hey. thank you. Hey, all right. Maybe we should watch Sound of Music. No. Like, this no. is massive. Please, no. For those of no. you who know people no. who didn't read The no. Prisoner of Azkaban and just watch the movie, I'm talking to my mom. If my mom were to ever actually watch a podcast of ours, I'd be talking to her. She's yeah. like, I don't need to read book three. And we're like, well, you know she ain't gonna. So <gasps> she ain't gonna. And, but but it listen, pains me. I, I it it pains me too because this the the movie does skip past. Like this. she's retired and does puzzles, and it's a pandemic. <laughs> she yeah, got the time. She watches birds. Yeah, like literally out her window. Mom, she turned her chair around. You can listen to the audiobook while you do your puzzles and watch birds, <laughs> mom. You need to read The Prisoner of Oscar. You can listen to it in one day. Oh, man. I won't do it. Anyway, but it, this is a big change from the, the movies. The, this whole, the, the last few chapters here, is when they go to the Shrieking Shack, that is when this whole book just turns overdrive. It's good. <laughs> it started, it, it, like, yeah, like the whole thing. And like, you can kind of see how you would get a little, I mean, a teensy little bit uh, bored prior to The Shrieking Shack. Okay. Nah, but all right. No, you can. Okay, I'll give. I'll, I'll give you, you got that. it. I'll I give mean, you that. Pri- I mean, let, let me. Let, we're in the Quidditch final. Like, okay, yeah, whatever. The Quidditch. Yeah, sure, fine. I, mean, I care about Quidditch. Yeah, I know. But if you know, for someone who's reading this book for what they're doing, yeah. But the let's Quidditch let's final. hang out in this chapter, okay. okay? We understand your point. All right. So. so we're here. Snape says, "Listen, man, you forgot your potion." You're a werewolf. I've been trying to save your butt. I don't even really like you, but I was trying to save your butt. And you weren't in your office. And instead, that flipping piece of parchment that you and Harry lied to me about, it, it is something. <laughs> it's not a joke shop thing. It's a flipping map. And it, guess what? I saw you writing on it. And I get, when, when, I, when I first read the chapter, I'm like, what the, like, what the heck, Lupin? How can you leave, how can you just leave this piece of parchment how can you leave the marauders map just laying out on the on your table well, probably and, he doesn't get that many visitors and how can you forget about your wolfsbane potion like this is a big deal you know that you need to take this and i think implicit in this and what we n- know from later on in the next chapters is like if you miss one you're done forget it. You, like you might as well just give up yeah that's it so there's a lot of things happening here and i'm thinking to myself 
It's like a birth control pill. <laughs> yeah, you miss one. You better watch out. Take, Hold on tight, spider monkey. Taking three ain't going to make it fixed. <laughs> no, just, you know, children watch this, so be um, careful. I, I got mad because I'm thinking, like, of course, like, he does this. He just happens to leave it out, and it just happens to be activated, and he just happens to not take the Wolfsbane potion. He has all this stuff happening, and it felt so contrived. And then I started thinking about it in terms of Lupin sees Pettigrew on the Marauder's map, and he is instantly triggered. Yeah. Like, Whoa, that, yeah. that's Peter Pettigrew, and he's with Ron Weasley and Harry Potter. What the heck is happening? How like, is this possible? Like, if you saw your mom, who's passed away yeah. 20 years ago, yeah. if you saw your mom on a map, or if you saw your mom, whatever the equivalent would be nowadays, on I, Facebook, on yeah. Facebook Live, you'd be like, where is she? I need to go find her. What right. is going on? Uh, you wouldn't be like, okay, well, you know what? Let me get my wolf spaying potion. Let's... Let, Mm-hmm. Okay, and yep, mischief managed. You wouldn't do no. that. And I, I thought about that, and I said, "This is the right choice because you are instantly saying, I got to find out what's happening here. I got to yes. know what's going down.' You drop everything. You drop you everything, run. and you run, and you run as fast as you can because this is the guy that should be dead. Yes, and he ain't, and he's with Harry Potter of all people. So, yeah, no, I I appreciate the fact that, uh, that. The map was left out for for Snape to find. Um, Janine here on, on YouTube says it's a book about magic. It's all contrived. Peace. Yes, that's true. A, a lot of it is contrived, but there are certain story things that um, that sh- you should adhere to for the sanctity and the and the, the structure of your story. Move on past the first three paragraphs, and, 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 and she does, and and, and the, the author does. Yes. Fine. Fair enough, Mary. Fair enough. <laughs> it's okay. Snape does get into a little tit for tat about Lupin being a werewolf, you know, holding on to that schoolboy grudge. And in that moment is when he has this incantationless spell that you were talking about. Yes. Yep. Where he puts out snake like cords that burst from the ends of his wand, twisted themselves around Lupin's mouth, wrist, and ankles. He he fell to the floor, unable to move. So I think many of us, like, we see Snape through Harry's eyes. We see Snape as movie Snape, just this snivelous, like, you know, skinny little guy. This is a guy who is an extraordinary wizard. Extraordinary wizard. Mm -hmm. He has great power. He has amazing knowledge. He spends all of his time in a school. So, yeah, he can do some pretty magnificent spells without necessarily saying it. We get to see a lot of these spells, for example, in the in the universe, in the movies, where people are doing spells without necessarily having to say it all the time. And it's something that they get to do as they get a bit better with mm-hmm. their magic. But yep. it is interesting, like you said, just all of the different wand lore and um, spell lore, mm-hmm. how things are different. Absolutely. And not only that, um, I... I there's a, there's this moment when Snape says, "Give me a reason. Mm-hmm. Give me a reason to do it, and I swear I will." It, like, and he's talking to Sirius. To Black, yeah. Yeah, and I, it just, I, it, it's just such a remarkable moment for Sirius in how this is still very much very serious. A, yeah, a schoolboy grudge mm-hmm. between all three of them in, in a sense well I mean between Lupin and Sirius and, and Snape I don't think so but continue well why don't you think so all right we're just gonna go all in this chapter read through a lens of a spoilerific zone read through the lens so hold on tight spider monkeys who haven't read okay. or watched the movies Snape Hated these boys in school. Loved Lily. Lost Lily. Multiple times. Multiple different ways, right? He thinks Sirius Black, the guy that bullied him and almost killed him in high school, is responsible for Lily's death, in addition to himself as well. But, like, he thinks all this time that Sirius Black is the one that told Voldemort where they were and was the secret keeper and is responsible aside from himself. He wants to kill Sirius Black so badly. 
so badly. So if you read this chapter, for those of you who read it already, if you read or listen to this chapter again, I know, you, I know you're all fine rereading it. Read it through as this man who has lost the love of his life and is just full, full of vitriol and hate, knowing that the man responsible, one of the men responsible for it, is out And his job has been to protect Harry Potter. And even later in the chapter, he's like, you're so arrogant. You're just like your father trusting Mm -hmm. in this man. How mad was Snape? How mad was Snape to know that James Potter trusted Sirius Black? Right. Oh, yeah. My best friend can do it. He'll protect us, Lily. No, your father trusted him, too. And your mom's dead because of it. The love of my life is dead because of it. All Snape is trying to do is protect Harry in this chapter. Right. Is do the thing that he's promised to do. Now, you guys know, well, I am not a... he's doing a little bit more here. He's got a little bit more intent, not necessarily to just protect Harry Potter. He's being slightly vindictive. I would say very vindictive yeah. to Sirius in saying, no, 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 no. We're not going to the castle. No, we're just yeah. bringing you straight to the Dementors. Listen, if someone killed you or someone was responsible proven by courts and all this kind of stuff but it wasn't proven by court or whatever there's no evidence but there was no Peter Pettigrew's finger was like like to whatever to the wizarding world yes Sirius, I mean, like, let's be real. If this happened nowadays, Sirius would totally be a Netflix documentary. <laughs> Making of a Murderer, Sirius Black. Yeah, right? Absolutely. <laughs> the Tiger sequel. King. Yeah, Tiger Dog King. Yeah, Padfoot King. Padfoot. Um, they, but to everyone in the Wizarding World, not just Snape, everyone in the Wizarding World thinks that Sirius was the one that really is responsible for it, isn't dead, breaks out, and is sighted coming towards Hogwarts. Yes. He's at Hogwarts. He's at Hogwarts. Keep breaking in. Breaks into the Gryffindor Tower with a knife. If someone was remotely responsible for killing you, Blake, and then they're not dead, <laughs> and then they come and they break out, and they go after my kids? It's a thing. I'm going to go get a Dementor right now. That's a thing. I like this cha- this part here, too. Harry Sorry, stood I'm playing there. Snape's advocate. No, that, that's okay. I, and that, I am shocked that you are. I couldn't get over it. Um, you, honestly, you read this through that lens, and you are going to have such a different experience. Don't read it with Jim Dale. Don't let Jim Dale audio read this, because he makes Snape like so mean. Like, you know, uh, give me a reason. Give me a reason to do it. Instead, take it from... You are responsible for murdering my love. Give me a reason. Think of Alan Rickman. Give me a reason to do it. And when he, I love in the movie when he says, I could do it, you know. Yes. It would be so Take the good. pained Alan Rickman yeah. from the last movie. Yes. And pop him right here. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh my God. Why do I kind of want Sirius to be dead right now? Like you may, I'm not saying definitely be on the train, but you see where he's coming from. The, the, the trio here too, Harry and Ron and Hermione react in the ways that their characters suggest they should react. Harry is still very angry with Sirius. It's proven by the fact that he still refuses to accept the truth necessarily that Sirius isn't responsible until there's some more proof later on. Ron just wigs out and Hermione she tries to listen to reason. She is the Logos. Professor Snape, it wouldn't hurt to hear what they've got to say, would it? I know. This was un- this was uncalled for. If I had to fault Snape for anything in this chapter it would be Calling Hermione a stupid girl. A well, they, stupid girl. There's a there's a couple of things that happen here. First, Miss Granger, you are already facing suspension from truth. the school. Snape's Hashtag back. truth. Yes, you Potter and Weasley are out of bounds in the company of a convicted murderer and a werewolf. Yeah. For once in your life, hold your tongue. Yeah, All I would be saying the same thing to my students if they did the same thing. And this is a. A, a stark contrast to how Lupin handled Hermione when she had all the questions and she was saying all the things and she and, and Lupin was saying he was acting still as a professor, very calm, very precise. You know, Hermione, you're right on two of those things. I am a werewolf and blah blah blah. But you're wrong on this. And Snape, in contrast, is already just honor. All, like, because from the they're jump. in danger. They're and, in danger in his mind. And then he says, keep quiet, you stupid girl. 
over the line, Snape. No name calling but in this house. But again, if you're looking at it from the perspective that you're asking yeah. all of us to look at it, it's like, shut up. You're literally here with a werewolf who hasn't taken his wolfsbane potion. He's about to change in about 15 minutes. Let's go. And a convicted murderer. Come on, kids. Come on. And I'll give you a cookie. But then we take it a step further here. It's not about justice. It's not about the right thing. It's vengeance is very Sweet. But take it from the schoolboy thing. How I hoped I would be the one to yeah. catch you. And that's why I say it's still very firmly a schoolboy grudge. No. Because it's vengeance. Vengeance that you are responsible for Lily's death. Yes. Yes, I hated you before. But that would Guess be more what? as an I adult. I hate you even more. But as an adult, that happened. And as an adult, that would be more about justice. This is not justice. I mean, is this justice is vengeance. Killing? In a court, in a court of law, potentially. In I mean, there, listen, listen. There, there's a huge argument to be made about that, and I'm not here to make that argument. No. All I'm saying is, in a court of law, in some cases, yes, that is justice. It's just a fact for the way that it is currently in our society. I'm saying there is no justice here in terms of Snape's no. motivations. It is vengeance, and yes. that's why I say it's not about what's right. It's about getting back. Well, this is the Slytherin. Right, and um, then you got Harry, who's like messy. Uh, yes, and that's probably the difference between the two. Though Snape does well. Snape's full of anger, and he's full of um, jealousy. I mean, here he has he he says, you know, I've told Dumbledore over and over and over not to trust you. Look at what you're doing. Like you have Dumbledore food. I've been trying to take care of Harry Potter. And I don't even like Harry Potter, and I—that's literally my only job—is to take care of this kid. And he keeps getting into trouble. Yeah. And now he's here with a convicted murderer who I hate. And then the kid that he's supposed to be protecting says, "You're pathetic. Just because they made a fool at, uh, a fool of you at school, you won't even listen." And Snape replies, "Silence. I will not be spoken to like that." Snape shrieked, looking madder than ever. Like father, like son, Potter. I've just saved your neck. Yep. And you should be thanking me on yep. a bended knee. You would yep. have been well served if he'd killed you. You would have died like your father. Too yep. arrogant to believe you might be mistaken in black. Yep. Now get out of the way. I will make you get out of the way, Potter. Yeah. Okay. Once again, don't read it with Jim Dale. If you're for my audiobook friends, read it this way. Harry calls him pathetic. Just because they made a fool of you at school, they won't even listen. It's not just because they made a fool of him at school. It is not just that. Does that help it? Yes. Have I always hated Sirius Black? Yes. But then he took my hate to like this catastrophic level. Yes. I'm not going to, I don't have time to explain it to Harry Potter. It's a secret anyway. I can't tell anybody that I will hashtag always love Lily Potter. <laughs> but to say this, like I just saved your neck again. And I've like, I'm telling you, read this chapter through a different lens, blows your flipping mind. That's true. I, I could see why he's so angry, obviously, Snape. Because he could have just bippity boppity booed Harry. Like, all right, I'll just do the same little thing that I just did to Lupin to make you be quiet. Boop. Instead, I, he's like, please just get out of the way. Get out of the way. Come on. Well, he also knows that Harry, no, no matter what, is a student. He can bippity boppity boo another teacher and probably, you know, f figure out you know, a reasoning for it. Not a kid. He could have like baby bippity boppity booed. <laughs> a little band-aid over the mouth. But Harry does not bip, uh, does not baby bippity boppity boo. He goes all in. Expelliarmus, he it's yelled. It's not Harry. Well, it's e all three. That's what I was just about to say. Expelliarmus, he yelled, except that his he wasn't the only voice that shouted. There was a blast that made the door rattle on its hinges. Snape was lifted off his feet and slammed into the wall, then slid it down to the floor, a trickle of blood oozing from under his hair. He had been knocked out. And Harry looked Pumphrey. around. Both Ron and Hermione had tried to disarm Snape. Mm -hmm. At exactly the same moment, Snape's wand soared in a high arc and landed on the bed next to Crookshanks. Um, I find this fascinating isn't because... Isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like rain... It's like he taught him the spell. It, that's true. That is very true. <laughs> it's like he taught all three of them this spell. Oh. Um, Last book. I, huh, free of charge. <laughs> <laughs> I find this fascinating because all three of them, 
the, our, our trio are apparently of the same mind. Is it because they want answers? Is it because it was highly emotional? Is it because they want to protect Harry? What do you think is the reasoning? First for off, Hermione was just called a stupid girl. Check. We know why she did it. <laughs> Harry was just uh, yelled at that his dad, uh, he just, you know, like father, like son. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Now he just insulted his dad. Done. Ron has a broken leg and he's been told that his rat is a person. He's just mad in general. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yes. Do they want to know the truth? Probably. Yeah, and I think there's even some textual evidence here that suggests it. I mean, pretty directly. It says, uh, Carry on. I, I, Harry says, I'm not saying I believe you, he retorted. And then it says, then it's time we offered you some proof, said Black. You, boy, give me Peter now. Harry wants the truth. This was more about justice than uh, Snape's convictions at all. Uh, this is about... I want to know the truth, but whatever it is, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Hermione is freaking out. We just attacked a teacher. We're going to be in so much trouble. And Harry doesn't care. He doesn't say, oh my God, you're right. Holy smokes. What do we do? He says, I still don't trust you. Yeah. Pay up. I also just blew up my aunt earlier this year. <laughs> so whatevs. <laughs> So I, I, I like all of this. I, I just I find this whole interaction fascinating. You know, we've we've talked a lot about how intelligent Sirius Black is, how he was one of the smartest wizards of his time, of course, growing up. And we see how he was able to manipulate the Dementors by shifting into a dog. He gets the paper from Fudge sees the rat, recognizes the rat as Peter Pettigrew after all these years realizes, okay, he is at Hogwarts, I need to go do this, and figures out a way to get there. Like, swims, sneaks yeah. through the bars, does all these things, hangs out in the forest, and gets to meet Crookshanks. <laughs> Can we just have a moment? Crookshanks is the one that steals the list of the passwords. Yeah. Crookshanks is the one that's helping him out. <sighs> Would you call this fortuitous for the sake of being fortuitous? Or No, I call it a fantastic hybrid beast. Uh, what do you mean? Kniesel, man. Well, yeah, but the fact that... I don't find it fortuitous. Uh... There's things that we don't understand about the magical world. You just got to let the mystery be. Or you can dive deep into the Potterverse and learn more about Crookshanks like I do. <laughs> and just trust that Crookshanks is a very, very intelligent cat that has special magical abilities. And what's cool... So Sirius is able to somehow communicate with Crookshanks. He's able to understand like, okay, I need the passwords. He took, Crookshanks took this from a boy's bedside table. Like, I don't know how that interaction went. Like, meow, meow, woof, woof. Like, yeah. I don't know how they understood each other. But also in this chapter, it talks about how Peter Pettigrew got to hear things through other rats. So it seems that when you're in your animagus form, mm -hmm. you can communicate with right. other animals, which right. is pretty cool. Uh, the reasoning here, there again, we are the the full extent of the shrieking shack is total exposition. But again, we're looking at a scenario where we are in Sirius is informing us as readers and the characters too. I mean, Lupin, Lupin is asking these questions as well. Just He's as just as confused, yeah, just as much as Harry is, and the exposition is is really it's well. It's well earned and it's well deserved and it's well needed. Um, I, I like this. But Peter got wind of what was going on and ran for it. This cat, Crookshanks, did you call him? Told me Peter uh, had left blood on the sheets. Meow, I suppose meow. he bit himself meow, while meow. faking his own death. And <laughs> works once I figured. <laughs> I think you should be Crookshanks again today for the different perspective. Crookshanks, yeah, maybe. And why and these war these words jolted Harry to his senses. And why did he fake his death? He said furiously. Because he knew you were about to kill him like you killed my parents. No, said Lupin. Harry, and now you've come to finish him off. Yes, I have, said Black, with an evil look at Scabbers. Then I should have let Snape take you, Harry shouted. Harry, said Lupin hurriedly. Don't you see? All this time we've thought Sirius betrayed your parents. 
And Peter tracked him down. But it was the other way around. Don't you see? Peter betrayed your mother and father. Sirius tracked Peter down. That's not true, Harry yelled. He was their secret keeper. He said so before you turned up. He said he killed them. He was pointing at Black, who shook his head slowly. The sunken eyes were suddenly over bright. Harry, I as good as killed them, he croaked. I persuaded Lily and James to change to Peter at the last moment, persuaded them to use him as secret keeper instead of me. I'm to blame. I know it. The night they died, I had arranged to check on Peter, make sure he was still safe. But when I arrived at his hiding place, he'd gone. Yet there was no sign of a struggle. It didn't feel right. I was scared. I set up for your parents' house straight away. And when I saw their house destroyed and their bodies... I'd realized what Peter must have done, what I'd done. Oh, man, imagine living like that. No, I can't. Here's a, here's a, a real question I have for you. Um, why wouldn't Sirius just go to Lily and James and say, you know what, why don't we just make Dumbledore the secret keeper? Because he was the one who offered to begin with, right? Yeah, but he's too obvious. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. He's the most powerful wizard on the planet. Uh, I think it's too obvious. Yeah, but, it, but the, the secret keeper can't give it up, can't give the information up. There's no amount of magic or whatever unless he simply chooses to give it up. And, and that's where you get sticky with these kinds of things in the story, just like time travel. You, you, and and w- what kinds of secrets can be withheld mm. by the secret keeper, right? I mean... Okay, you kill somebody. I tell a secret keeper. That secret stays like that okay, forever. Okay, so here's a question for you. If you needed a secret keeper to keep me and the kids safe, would you trust your best friend or would you trust the president of the ex- of the United States if you like like the current <laughs> Depends on which president. Yeah, but you know what that's I'm saying like if say someone you liked, I really admired. Say and looked up to that was formative okay, so it in was my Tom growth. Brady. Okay, so you can either have oh. your secret keeper be Tom Brady, <laughs> who you don't know like super well, but like he's you know Tom Brady, or it's your best friend, your ride or it die. Might be, might be Tom Brady because that man's a saint. Okay, we'll that, say it's not Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yes. No, I, I I hear what you're saying. Who would you choose to be like? I tr- honestly trust you with my family's life. <sighs> That's a valid argument. It, it, again, it, it all depends on... Like, I'm trying to think of a Dumbledore figure in my life. I really don't have one. I would say the closest one would, before all the ugliness, would be my dad. Um, he would not have saved me. He would not have. Uh, so at that point, <laughs> <laughs> it's that, that's just true. Um, hey, Foldy. Uh, you know, guess what? You want to get rid of a problem for me? Yeah. <laughs> I really like my daughter-in-law. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I would probably, I would probably go with my best friend at that point. Oh, I probably would because my dad don't like you. So, and he don't even like me anymore. So it, it, it's neither here nor there. So, so it, you picked a bad point. Yeah, <laughs> but but we're getting. I don't know. I I, agree. I, mean, I think it's, it's I think it's a valid question. Yeah, it's like how close was James Potter with Dumbledore? Or was he more like a boss figure? More of like, oh, he got it, you know. I mean, you think about Dumbledore even in the books at this point. He's just kind of like aloof most of the time. Not aloof, but he's busy most of the time. Whereas James and Sirius have gone through some amazing stuff together. So I agree. It could have been Dumbledore, but maybe James was just like, obviously it's going to be serious. He's my ride or die. We got this, man. So then we get Peter Pettigrew. Turning into a human, and he starts to try to plead his case, which fails miserably. Fails miserably. One of the cool things is that he refers to the Dark Lord, and the only other time we've heard about the Dark Lord, it was in Trelawney's The Dark Lord, Servant shall return. Recola. Yeah. So, you know, everyone else is calling him Voldemort, and it's just kind of goes to show you still where his allegiance lies. And I, I really loved this story that they were talking about where they were saying, um, Sirius was saying, you know, I know why you stayed a rat. I know you didn't stay a rat because of me. Right. I know that you stayed a rat because all of the Death Eaters blame you. Right. For what happened. 
right. mind blown and, right and, there. And then I, I also like this too, where Harry says, you know, he had the chance to kill me a, a, a hundred times. Why wouldn't he have done it? And Sirius says, because there was nothing in it for him. You know, there was nothing in it for him. All he wants is... Oh, Peter Pettigrew Yeah, Peter, wants, Peter, yeah. Peter, Peter Pettigrew, yeah. He, all he wants is the... the um, assumption of power. All the not the assumption, but it, the uh, the uh, the absorption of power. It, the nothing. It's only meant to get ahead, not the sake of doing. He doesn't. He is not fully convicted in the idea of killing Harry Potter. He's convicted in the idea of power of power praise. and serving Lord Voldemort when it best serves him, and. When Peter Pettigrew is brought back and it's no longer Scab is, Sirius is freaking out and he's frothing at the mouth essentially and it's a big problem. And as scary as that might be and as uh, visceral as that might be, the person that worries me here a little bit more is Remus. Tell me. And I say that because, well, hello, Peter, said Lupin pleasantly as though rats frequently erupted into old school friends around him. Long time no see. Mm. It's just so calm. It's so cool and collected. Maybe it's the Wolfsbane potion, man. Yeah, but he hasn't... No, I'm just saying, maybe it's some lingering effects, you know? Maybe it's just like... (laughs) (laughs) He's just like a... The dude, you, yeah, he's the hey, dude. That's why he's sloppy. That's that's like your opinion, man. Yeah, <laughs> let's you know, let's just take like twenty minutes for exposition and just this, like catch up. This man. aggression will not stand, Hermione. <laughs> you're the smartest witch of your age, girl. I I like it because you know that Remus is feeling everything that Sirius is because. He trusted him. He trusted Peter. He, tr- in, he, uh, his friendship with James and Sirius was obliterated. He was left on his own. He was his happiest when he was with James, Sirius, and Peter. That was when his life made sense. And when they all disappeared in the snap of a finger, you, his life was rendered... Uh, invalid, essentially. Uh, not until finally Dumbledore gives him a job at Hogwarts. And all of these things are, are coming together at this one moment. And the reveal of Pettigrew as Scabbers and Scabbers becoming Pettigrew is such a beautiful narrative moment because we've had all of these threads throughout this entire book uh, whether it is Dumbledore helping out Lupin, the friendships, Harry, Snape, all of it, it all comes together in this one shining moment. Peter Pettigrew comes. It's 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 such a structurally and narratively complicated and solid moment for this story. If you can't get blown out, if you can't get blown over, like get your doors blown off by this moment, you, you don't have a pulse. You don't have a pulse, and that's that, there's no argument otherwise. Like you said, here's another perfect moment. You know, uh, Peter Pettigrew says, he killed Lily and James, and now he's going to kill me too. And Lupin says, no one's going to try and kill you until we've sorted a few things out. <laughs> it keeps, it just that calm. Mm. It's Nobody's that... going to kill you until. Yeah, so mm. you know, you're not safe. No, 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 no. You're not safe, but just... Just know, <laughs> just know that we're going to get some answers here. Um, and then they, you know, they try to do the whole thing and he tries to, uh, he tries to, you know, spit back that, you know, he's innocent and he's maintaining this story. He's trying his desperately to stay alive and to be in Harry's good graces and Ron's good graces. Uh, and I like this. Peter Grew wiped his face again. He was almost panting for breath. Me? A spy? You must be out of your mind. Never. Don't. I don't know how you could say such a. Oh, God. And, and then Lily and James may only made you a secret keeper because I suggested it. Black hissed so venomously that Pete Pettigrew took a step backwards. 
I thought it was a perfect plan, a bluff. Voldemort would be sure to come after me. Would never dream they'd use a weak, talentless thing like you. It must have been the finest moment of your miserable life telling oh. Voldemort you could hand him over to the you could hand him the potters. Oh yes, Sirius oh. can slay with his words. Oh. Just cut you down. Oh man. You know, you know while he was pacing back and forth his pad foot inside Azkaban, he was like, What would I say? What am I going to say? I know. Came up with this. Because you know, like on the fly, any normal person would be like, bleh, bleh, I hate you, Peter. <laughs> but serious? Ooh. I mean, talk about vengeance. You know, if you want to play the vengeance game. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, now that vengeance, that the the serious and everything, that is real. That That is some serious, ugly... I want the world to burn vengeance. <laughs> Just, I want everything to burn. It's great because you can really see this dichotomy of how Snape and Severus are super alike. <sighs> like grudge holders, really, really impressive with their magic skills, brilliant in their own ways, you know? But one had something that the other was always jealous of, and that was friends. Oh, everyone needs a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I hear this, and you know now we have kids who are school age, and I just think of how different Snape's life would have been had he had a friend, had like things not gone sour with Lily, how maybe if he had a couple extra chances, because let's be real, he was a jerk, but I'm thinking about one of um, one of our children right now, is hanging out with another child that has very poor behavior, okay? Like, gets in trouble every single day, needs to go to the timeout corner, which they call the calm corner nowadays. There's no timeouts, calm down time. And our child has gotten a little in trouble because they have decided to um, try to teach the unruly one how to calm down and how to breathe, you know, shh, <laughs> with the a shark, shark fin. fin. Shark fin. Shark fin, let's calm you down. You need to, you know, let's work on your emotions. And I've had to tell this child, like, you need to stop. It's not your job. I appreciate your kindness. But on the flip side, like, how kind, you know, we, we've we've com- commented with this kid. We're like, you know, you're doing a really nice job, but it's also not your job. But I just feel bad. I just feel bad for little Snape. Um. Elizabeth here on Facebook says, Pettigrew makes my skin crawl. And here's here's a, a, a little excerpt that'll make you, your skin crawl as well. Ron, haven't I been a good friend, a good pet? You won't let them kill me, Ron, will you? You're on my side, aren't you? But Ron was staring at Pettigrew with the utmost revulsion. I let you sleep in my bed. Bed, yes. He said. Oh, 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 that makes your skin crawl for multiple reasons. I sure I'm. I obviously, you know, it, it's it's meant for for one particular way, mm-hmm. and and he, he, oh, just thinking of that just makes me makes me want to like crawl out of my skin. Mm-hmm. It just absolutely, and then. I, I also like here to Pettigrew knelt, trembling uncontrollably, and turned his head slowly towards Harry. Harry, Harry, you look just like your father, just like him. In this case right now, we have a second invocation of Harry's father. One from Snape yep. being uh, of derision and um, ignorance. And this one is meant to, you know, uh, call... In a certain amount of favor for Harry, um, one to c- compare him in a good light. It's and neither of them are necessarily true. I mean, like I'm sure he does look like his father, but they're not done for just for, just purposes. Mm-hmm. They're done in order to make a case. They're done in order to. Um, elicit an emotional response either from Harry himself or from the the person saying them. Yeah. And it's it shows you how easily and how quickly parents can be used to manipulate um manipulate a person per, yeah. and their feelings mm-hmm. and what's what's doing the what's doing the right for them. And I give it to Sirius. He says, how dare you speak to Harry, roared Black. How dare you face him? How dare you talk about James in front of him? 
that is a moment of, of clarity. Peter should not be invoking James's name whatsoever, mm-hmm. especially given the fact that he was the result. He was the reason why James died and Lily died. Yep. Yeah. Excellent stuff. Really, really excellent stuff. We have a great question on our Facebook Live. Tammy Lish Spencer says, how is it that Peter Grew, a Pettigrew was a Gryffindor and not a Slytherin? <sighs> That's a good question. Um, Pettigrew was a master manipulator. And I think that is something that is underplayed through these books. Like, we aren't... I don't think we're confronted with the notion how good of a wizard he is. Agreed. Um, you just have to infer it. And I don't know if that's explicitly Slytherin. Well, yeah, I think we need to first get rid of the conception that Gryffindor equals good and Slytherin equals bad. We need to like rinse our minds clear of that because there are Gryffindors that do bad things. Sirius Black was a jerk. He was a bully. He, like he was not the kindest student to all students. It's not like he was Mr. Noble to everybody. He wasn't necessarily a good leader. He was a bully in many aspects, particularly to Sirius Black. We look at even J- Jabroni's like Cormac McLeggan. Okay. Yeah. He's he's a he's a Gryffindor. Then we look at Slytherins. Um, you know, we have Severus Snape, who yeah, okay, had his moments of good, but really was like not great for a very long time. Also had a bad attitude. But even Professor Slughorn. Professor Slughorn is a Slytherin. So, yes. you know, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you're in such a house. I think what it shows is that um, Peter Pettigrew was, like, fame-hungry or hero-hungry. You know, like the heroicism that a lot of Gryffindors look for. Like, he wanted to be a somebody. So who's to say that he didn't make that choice? Maybe maybe the sorting hat was on his head. And it was like, oh, okay. So, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a hero. I want to be a somebody. I want to be important. Yes. You know? A lot of the same things, like... Uh, you know, we look at Harry. We we see the we see the show, the books, all this stuff through Harry's eyes. But Harry does a lot of things that aren't necessarily smart. He's he's very um, reckless and judgmental. Um, yes. You know, like he's not just because he's Gryffindor is doesn't mean he's perfect. So I think that probably Peter got to make a choice. I see Peter in school a lot like Neville Longbottom, who until Neville really blossomed, you know, with the Order of the Phoenix, yeah. <laughs> um, he was just like a little follower and he wanted to be buddy buddies with everybody and he wasn't that great at magic yeah. either. Yeah. So I kind of see Peter being in the same position as Neville Longbottom. But then we go back to Dumbledore's quote, you know, it is our choices. It is our choices that make us who we are. Yeah, and Victoria here on Facebook says it does take courage to do some of the crap that Pettigrew does, even though he's a sneaky s. I mean, you think that he he became an animagus, animagus. However, we say this word because I make it up every time. Still, <laughs> so he he went through that. He still was brave enough to go through that, and then brave enough to sneak off the grounds w- with his buddies. So he made terrible, terrible choices, though, as an adult. And Mo here on Facebook even says, if the houses are aspirational, maybe the sorting hat was trying to develop Peter's courage in a positive way. Whoops, mm. didn't work. Uh, yes, I would, I think I agree with this. Like, the houses are treated in such a black and white manner. In the beginning, because then you look at Regulus Black, sorted into yes. Slytherin, came from the Black family, and, and yet was does. one of the most brave and courageous Gryffindor Absolutely. in his adulthood. Absolutely. Uh, Allison here on Facebook says, I think Peter may have been a Gryffindor as a child, but I think the years of being a hanger on to the other boys, I think he became very jealous and contemptuous of them as they grew older. His turning to the other side is simply a factor of his position as someone nobody looked at twice and never gave a second thought. Voldemort likely exploited his desire to be seen and be important. You know what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Think about kids that you went to high school with, maybe kids who were, um, you know, captains of a baseball team or, you know, ran some kind of club at your school. And then they turned out to be schmucks. They did bad things in life. You know, you hear about them from other friends or at reunions or read about them, God forbid, in like the newspaper. And you sit there and you're like, really? 
oh man, they weren't like that when I grew up. People change, obviously. So uh, very, very interesting. Interesting. What do you think of Harry's reasoning for not killing Pettigrew in this moment? Get off me, Harry spat, throwing Pettigrew's hands off him in disgust. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it because I don't reckon my dad would have wanted his best friends to become killers just for you. And notice, this is the third time his parents or his father is invoked. His his name is invoked. Mm -hmm. And, and this, too, is not necessarily... I mean, it is done out of justice. It is done of something that he This Harry's, is noble. This is noble, but it's also an interpretation of what Harry thinks his father would mm. do. It's not necessarily just for being just. It's, my dad would want this. I, I don't necessarily know that's true. Uh, you know, I see it more from my dad wouldn't want his two best friends being murderers versus saving Peter Pettigrew's life. Like the, also good, the yeah. guilt that his two best friends would have to live with themselves for being murderers when they weren't. Like we saw the the trials that um, Sirius has gone through and he didn't even actually kill anybody. So I saw it more as, guys, like killing some, you know, it's granted Harry's 13, but guys, killing people is like a really big deal. <laughs> I don't think you want to do that. And when when you consider what, Sirius is trying to do here. He is trying to convince Harry. He says, you're the only person who has the right to decide, Harry. First off, notice this quick, quick turnaround uh, from from Sirius. From being the judge, jury, and executioner five short minutes ago to, uh, to, uh, to Pettigrew. Now he's saying, you know what, Harry, you're the only person who can decide at this mm. moment. Uh, but, but... You may be the only person that has the right to decide, but think what he did. Think. Just think about what he did to your parents. And Harry says he can go to Azkaban. If anyone deserves that place, he does. I mean, they'd have to let the Dementors know, though, that he can turn into a rat. Because if a dog could sneak through the bars, you know a rat can. Absolutely. Uh, and He needs to be put in a little cage. Just, just a little teeny tiny cage. Um and knowing what Azkaban does to you, uh, I mean, it makes even Hagrid can uh, doubt his life. Hagrid had like very happy thoughts that were sucked out of him. Sirius didn't have any happiness left in him, right? Uh, and but he was—he knew he was innocent. Like all—all yeah. all of these things were what kind of kept him around. Yeah. Do you think Pettigrew has any guilt? Or is he? Was he happy to do it for the sake of advancement? I don't know. Like when I see Peter Pettigrew, I really just think of those creepy, crazy people who are like murderers. And you're like, do you have a conscious, a conscience? Like, do you ever think about what you did? I don't think Peter does. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I think Peter's just one of those tapped, crazy individuals who you're like, you cannot he's a sociopath. rationalize. Yeah, he's yeah. a sociopath. Yeah, like he does whatever he melds into whatever he has to meld into yes. to exist. Yes, and he'll legitimize and rationalize whatever it is Agreed. in order to to further his agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's why he stays with a wizarding family. That's why he, um, you know, teeters. I mean, Amanda on Instagram is asking, why didn't Pettigrew go find Voldemort when he first met Harry Potter back in book one? Because it wasn't yet for his benefit. Correct. You know, like they were just like inklings. He wasn't there were inklings sure. That and he was scared. The, yeah. He was scared of retribution, mm -hmm. not from Sirius because Sirius was in prison, but from the rest of the Death Eaters. Mm -hmm. So, and again, he's not come out as Peter Pettigrew by choice. This was forced on him. Yes. You know, and so he he is now forced to deal with the consequences of that. And the worst consequence of them all is being put in Azkaban where you lose your sense of self and not even not necessarily as a rat or as a person but just the will the mm -hmm. will to live and when you consider his motivation to um, 
expose Lily and James. It's for the sake of power. Yep. Uh, that exact opposite is living in Azkaban, where you have no power. You have no will to live. You have no advancement. You are simply it's just stuck in nothingness. Yeah. And it, it's not even self-preservation. You're just stuck in nothingness. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just as bad as a Dementor's Kiss at that point, because you lose your soul. And I think in, in, in Azkaban, you are very you are very close to the line of losing your soul. At least that's the way that Hagrid seems to describe it when he talks about it in this book. Mm -hmm. That's just my thought on that. So We, of course, end up with Lupin and um, Sirius saying, okay, let's take Snape out of here. We'll just like motocorpus his yep. body and make it fly and we'll take him out. And then let's chain ourselves up to Pettigrew. Lupin does it and Ron's like, and I'm going to be chained up to him too because he was my rat. <laughs> Ron, once again, has a broken leg, but Ron's just like sticking it just out. Chilling. As someone who's had a broken leg, they had no moaning in this chapter and yeah. I would have been moaning. <laughs> oh, okay guys, can we hurry this up? Hey, oh. you know what? My leg really hurts. But look at the time. Where's Pomfrey? <laughs> uh, you got anything else you want to say about this chapter, Mom? That's it. I agree. We went long we on did. this one. It was a good chapter. It was a good chapter. The rest of them are good chapters from here on out. So you got to get a different perspective. I know you do. I mean, I'll try. I just feel like I like <laughs> laid it all out. Well, let's see what but we okay, got. We'll see. Holy cricket. You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are? I mean... I could just be Crookshanks again. Crooky! <laughs> Crooky, where you been? Oh, chilling on a soft bed, my friend. No, just... you gotta do the voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you gotta do the voice. Sorry, hey, yeah. Crooky. I've been... <coughs> Hairball. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Crooky, what's going on today? You know, man. Yeah? This is the greatest day ever. <laughs> Why is I, that? My best friend. Yeah? The dog guy. Yeah. He's, he's awesome, okay? And... <laughs> He hates the rat guy like I hate the rat guy. <laughs> and we got the rat guy. <laughs> we got him. Got him. And you want to know what's the best thing? What's that, Cookie? I didn't even have to lift a finger. <laughs> <laughs> Lay down in the bed. All these guys. You were just chilling. Chilling. <laughs> licking my tail. <laughs> my bottle brush tail. Don't even know what that means. I picture like a baby bottle brush thing. <laughs> licking it. Licking other things, but I won't talk about it because this is a family friendly show. <laughs> Loving hey, you life. Know, a cat's got to clean. You, you got you to gotta stay clean, Crookie. You nap. You eat. You, you, co you, you, kibitz, you kibitz with a dog and then you clean. <laughs> and then you serve justice, Crookie. <laughs> hey. You did it. High five. <laughs> <laughs> None of you get that, but when our cat licks the, the nether regions, her back leg comes up, and I always say high five. So just picture that. High five. Um, yeah. End scene. End scene. Oh, man. Crookie voice. That That is up there with Claire voice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yes. That is a Hall of Fame voice. All right. Talk about a Hall of Fame chapter. That was a doozy. <sighs> Uh, can can we have our listener question? So if you had a question inside the chat, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, that was not asked, reshare it here. Start it off with a lightning bolt emoji if you can. Do we have any listener emails? Caitlin says, uh, Crookshanks needs another smoke. <laughs> Gotta get my ziggies in beer. Yeah, go to the packy. <laughs> Your cousin from Boston. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, we do have some listener questions. Here we go. Let's do it. Oh. Miles head. All right, this one comes from Monique, and I think this one was uh, came in a little bit late. She says, in the last episode, you talked about how Lupin saw Pettigrew's name on the map, dropped everything, and went to investigate. My question is, how did Fred and George never notice that there was always somebody named Peter Pettigrew near Ron? Ron always slept with scabbers in the Gryffindor dormitory, so wouldn't Fred and George have seen his name at some point? They definitely would know who Pettigrew was since their dad works for the ministry. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So, What are your thoughts, Blake? Because I have thoughts on this matter. No, no, I, I, why, don't you, why don't you go ahead and tell me? As someone who taught teens and preteens, I gotta tell you, they only care about themselves. They especially don't care about their siblings. So... 
Really, Fred and George were looking out for Filch, Mrs. Norris, Dumbledore, Snape, McGonagall. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Yep. Maybe they were spying on girls. They were definitely not they don't care checking about their out Ron Weasley all. in the Gryffindor Tower. Yep. All oh, set. By the way, I'm sorry, that comes from Tessa. She's from Pasadena, and she's 13. So, Tessa, welcome. Oh, my God, Tessa, I'm so sorry that I just said that about 13-year-olds. <laughs> but, but do you agree with me, Tessa? Like, I don't know if you have a sibling, but if your sibling came to school, would you be snooping on your teachers, your friends, or would you be caring about what your little sibling's up to? Because I know for me, I went to school with my little brother. Yes, I was a senior when he was a freshman. The only time I cared about my little brother at the same school is when I would see him constantly making out with new women in the hallways. (laughs) And when people on my sports teams would be like, oh my God, did you see that kid, Alden? And mind you, my brother doesn't look anything like me. No. Except when I use like some weird Snapchat filter that makes me a man and I look just like him. Exactly. But he has olive skin. It's so weird. It's, it is weird. <laughs> He's like the, we joke because we're Scottish and um, he has like the olive Scottish skin that all mm-hmm. of my family got except for me and my sister. Anyway, so. Would you tell him that he's raised by wolves or something? Or are you? Yeah, I used to tell him that he was like, yeah, I used to not be nice. <laughs> yeah. There was one time my sister, she found a hair mm-hmm. in the middle of her palm, mm-hmm. and my dad told her, told her that they adopted her from a pack of monkeys, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why she had it. She a was hair growing a hair out of her hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they adopted her from a pack of monkeys. Oh my god! <laughs> no, I was not nice to my brother. Oh. Man. For a few years, oh. I took the Adams Family movie and I took the baby's picture out and I glued a picture of his head on it. Oh. And then I took the Air Buddies pictures and I put his face on one of the Air Buddy babies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, yeah. So that's that's my opinion. Rachel here says my thinking on that is that Fred and George said they uh, nicked the map before Harry and Ron got there. They hardly ever used it by this time because they memorized all of the secret entrances. Yeah. And then they probably only looked at it to see where Filch, Mrs. Norris, and probably McGonagall, where yeah. they were. Agreed. So I think that is fair. And again, this is the problem with introducing such powerful magic in a book like this because you get the time turners and you get the Marauders map and it is so incredibly incredibly powerful. Just hold on tight, Spider Monkey. It, Wait till we're done with this series. And cause... it causes it causes so many complications to yeah. your narrative. Yeah. Um, Just hold on tight. Yeah. No. No. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, Caitlin asks, "Can we get an Errol and Crookshanks recap of this book?" <laughs> but in all seriousness, why didn't they wait to transform Pettigrew until Dumbledore was around? I well, because again, I, I don't think we're in the place of logic at this moment. I think we're in a place of we have to show Harry that we're right. And when we show Harry we're right, we're going to kill Pettigrew. But Harry deserves the right to know that this guy is who we're saying he is. He ain't just a rat. He's this. He's a rat. Like he's a rat, rat. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that. It, so that's that. I also think that Dumbledore is just like never around. So they just want to take care of it now. Let's do this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, let's just do it. Who cares? I- ir- irrespective of Dumbledore, what is what does it matter? This guy deserves to die. And I see that I see that visceral reaction. Like I, I understand it because I you know, as soon as Sirius found out that Pettigrew was around, all he could think of is this guy's gonna die. This guy's gotta die. It's not the smartest choice because if Pettigrew dies, that mean that doesn't prove uh Sirius's Sirius innocence. innocence. Well, it kinda does if his body's there. It doesn't prove it, prove it, but it means he didn't kill him. That's true. That's true. Good point. And then you have to call into question the, the death of the other muggles and wizards and like, okay, what actually happened? If, if Pettigrew, isn't, Pettigrew isn't dead, well, then what happened? So, you know, at that point, you know, fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. A- any other questions? I don't know. You have, the mic, you have the mouth, so I can't uh, see. Let's see. Just scroll the other way, baby. There you go. Um, no, I, I think, think we're, we're good. good. I think we're good. Uh, let's see. Nanerg on Instagram says, or does the map give the name you know the creature by? Would it read Scabbers to the twins? That's a good question. Uh, that, that, no, see, because... 
I mean, it's an interesting thought. That's that's a that's a good thought because because when we see Albus Dumbledore, it's not his full name, right? But then why? Maybe oh, maybe it's because my Marauder's map isn't downstairs right now, so I can't check for you. <laughs> maybe it's because Lupin knows Scabbers as Pettigrew. That's the reason why he sees Pettigrew, and the twins see Scabbers as Scabbers. That's if Scabbers shows up. I just think they were aloof. They probably, if they even saw Peter Pettigrew, they probably would have been like, maybe it's just another Gryffindor that we don't know. Because they're just too busy with their own lives. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that's a good good point. I think, I just don't think that they really needed to look in Ron's room. I think they had enough stuff going on. I, I, I think the story explanation <laughs> is 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 fair that Mary's giving. I think the real... I wouldn't have checked up on my brother at all, whatsoever. The the art of story crafting, I think this is a loophole. And I think this is one of those things that, again... I it, want people to weigh in. If you had a younger sibling who went to school with you, were you checking up on them? Or were you like the Goonies? This is my time. This is my, my time, time down, down here. here. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, you got anything else you want to say about this chapter nope. before we go? Let's close it out. This is the first time we've gone over an hour for this podcast in quite a bit. There you go. It, well, it was well worth the discussion. I agree. Well worth the discussion. I agree. I, I think we're probably going to do 45 to hour podcasts. Well, Angela said, I asked you what you said about Sirius Black. Let us know that question, Angela, and we will riff for a hot second to see if we can answer it during this music. Uh, yeah, sure. Because you may need to scroll up is what she's asking. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Let's just make this episode longer. You know, yeah, I'm here for <laughs> let's it. Let's just keep going. I'm here for it. Uh, okay. Oh. Uh, or was he? But he was Lily and James' bestie, and they made him Harry's godfather, and he was so Go kind back of... Up. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. Angela, I'm sorry. I don't uh, see it. I don't see it. You email know, us. Email us the question yeah. right now. Email it to us right now. We'll, we'll talk about it next podcast, yes. next episode. Easy, we'll do that. Easy. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the Podiverse tonight. Make sure you go to marionblake.com. Check out all the great podcasts that we have there. And go to jointhenerdclan.com and make sure you do not miss out on me being the next model for a minute with Mary. So Trust excited. Me. So, so excited. Thanks once again. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake. Mischief Managed. Mischief Managed.